capital culinarian range oven won't heat and one burner won't light so today we're going to cover some easy ways to get this very awesome and expensive range working again first we're going to do the oven so we've got it unplugged we're going to open the oven door and we're going to pull out these racks the way you pull them out you pull them towards you and then you grab the ends and you fold them in it's pretty cool they hinge in and you can get the racks out then we're going to lift up this heat deflector lift it straight up and pull it off and we're just going to be replacing the bake igniter this is on the 60 inch capital range and this is the left side oven we're going to take off the doors we're going to pull back on these little latches toward us on both sides and then lift the door to about 20 degrees and then once we do that it's almost closed we can lift it up and off of the hinges we'll set that down now we've already removed the burner tube in the back by removing two phillips head screws and now we're going to be taking off this part by loosening the brass nut that's bringing gas to the um, orifice or jet that brings gas into the burner tube so we're turning that lefty loosey loosening that up get that off we've already removed two phillips head screws that are holding this igniter bracket in place so we've removed the burner tube already and we've also removed the two phillips head screws that are holding the bracket in place. And here is the igniter, and those are the two holes there where the Phillips head screws came out. So now we can pull the gas tube off, and then we can push this bracket inside the oven cavity, and we can lift the igniter and the igniter bracket out. Now we have to remove two Phillips head screws. These have nuts on the back of them, little brass nuts. So you want to spin it and then grab the nut maybe with your fingers or with some pliers. Spin off those, those two nuts here on the back. And then we can get the igniter off. And the igniters are not that expensive. This is a Robert Shaw igniter that we're putting on, which is a replacement for the Capital One. You can get it from Capital Two. Robert Shaw one's a lot less expensive. We'll put a link in the description below. These are really good ranges though. Very simple, a lot like the Wolf and Viking ranges and Blue Star ranges. So we're getting that second machine screw and nut off. And now we can remove the igniter off of its bracket. Here's the Robert Shaw one. It comes um, with the igniter and with the wires, but not the terminals. We have to take those off of the old igniter and splice them onto the new one, which is really easy. It comes with ceramic wire nuts, which makes it really easy to do. So we can see it's an exact copy. If you ever ran into one where the bracket wasn't the same, the middle bracket, you could bend the bracket outwardly and then release the ceramic igniter inside. And you could slide that brand new igniter, you could just bend this out. You could slide that brand new igniter into the old metal bracket and then pinch it shut. It'll work just as good. This one happened to be the exact same bracket though. So it made it easy. So you're gonna put those screws back in. We'll put the nut behind it and then we'll tighten those up. These go out probably about every five to six years, depends how much you use the oven for baking. But they work really good. When they stop working and they get a little bit tired, um, the oven won't reach its correct temperature or it'll take a long time for it to get up to temperature. Sometimes you might even have a small explosion because it'll let in a little gas and ignite it late. Nothing gets hurt, but sometimes the oven door will pop open. So if you ever have those symptoms, you can, you can replace this really quick and easy. So we're gonna hold on to that nut with our pliers and we'll tighten that up, get the second one tightened up. 
and I'm just sitting down on the kitchen floor. It's easy to do. I'm sp I'm spliced on the new um, igniter onto the old wires, and I'm gonna feed the wires through the through this hole in the cavity. I'll feed the bracket into the oven cavity. Feed the brass pieces through this hole, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the two Phillips head screws in that hold the metal bracket down into the oven cavity. I'm gonna put that gas tube on and then just lightly tighten it, not fully tighten it yet, but just get the threads on. Putting those two Phillips head screws back in. I'm sorry we didn't have that during the take apart, but this is kind of the reverse. We're just putting them back on. Go ahead and tighten those up. You doing this on your own, you probably save about 150 to maybe $250 from labor that you have to pay someone to do it, but it's pretty easy to do, don't need many tools. We're tightening that second Phillips head screw that's holding the igniter in position. Okay, now I can tighten that brass nut. I want to get a finger tight and then go just a little bit further with my wrench. And that's going to make sure I have a good gas tight connection. Now I'm hooking up the incoming power to the igniter. And then the other one goes right onto the safety valve terminal. You can see it just plugs right in to the safety valve. I'm going to tuck away these wires, get them out of the way. We're almost done with this oven igniter. Pretty quick and easy. When people tell me their oven isn't heating, it's my favorite repair because it's so straightforward and easy to do and has really good result. Get those all tucked away. All right, here is the burner tube. If you ever, ever ever have to adjust the air fuel mixture, there's a little nut you unscrew here. You can turn this right or left to let in either more air or less air. You want to get a nice blue flame with very little yellow tinges. It would be a, a great flame. So I put the burner tube back in. I'm going to add these two Phillips head screws. The other end of it went over that brass orifice that was connected to the igniter bracket. So now we're just adding those screws in by hand and we'll tighten them up. Here's the Phillips head screwdriver. Really like my Milwaukee power driver I've been using that for about six years it's it's so good it's so tough all right now we can turn on the oven for the left side you can see there's a lot of burner knobs this is an eight eight burner 60 inch capital range this is an awesome range uh, I gotta go that's that's the wrong one I gotta go over here to my left a little further activate the left oven, the smaller oven. There we go. So I'm gonna set it for 350. And we'll just look at this glow igniter. It should start to glow pretty quick. And usually within about 60 seconds, it should let gas in. It should be hot enough to let gas in. It acts like a match that lights the gas. You can see it's like white hot. And there goes the gas. We've got a nice blue flame. So it looks really good. So we'll go ahead and turn it off. We'll go ahead and finish the reassembly, putting on this kick plate. So we're pushing it in at the top first, we'll raise it up by about an inch, and then lower down the bottom part. It goes into a bracket, and we have to add in three Phillips head screws to hold it in. So 
Tighten that one. There's one in the middle. If you ever have a, on the big oven, if you ever have it where it doesn't heat, take this whole panel off and you'll find that there is a thermal overload with a red button. If you press that button, you'll probably get your heat back. It probably got too hot, maybe during self-clean. So that's an easy one. You can just take this same panel off and there'll be a little red button you can press. Just getting those tight. Okay, now we're gonna put the um, heat deflector back in. Just sits there by gravity. Just get it in position. All right, here's the racks. They're gonna go in and then you Fold them out and the wheels go right into the slots. Pretty slick. Then push them in. So you get them in part way and then you fold the wheels outwardly. They lock in and just push it in. It's a clever design. Now we'll do the door. You lift it up. You're gonna set those forks into the oven and set it down 90 degrees and then push these brackets back in. They fold in toward the oven and then you should be able to close the door easily. We're also looking at one of the burners here. It's been given trouble. It's the one they use more, more often than the others. It's on the front near the left. It's very common. This one's used a lot. So we're taking these pieces off, taking the drip trays out. We've got the grates off. You don't have to take them all off. We're just going to clean them anyway. But um, I'm just trying to get to the ones on the left here. They're, they're the ones of concern. So if we go in two rows from the left in the front, that's the one that's been acting up. When we try to turn it on, we hear very faint clicking noise but we don't see any spark now that could be due to um, a really corroded or dirty burner head and the um, metal pieces have to touch each other and make good metal to metal contact and if they don't if they're too corroded like this one you have a really bad ground and the electricity can't travel through and create a good circuit to create a nice strong spark. So sometimes just cleaning this stuff up, getting rid of the grease that's built up, getting rid of the corrosion will do the trick. Other times it could be a broken igniter that's causing the problem, um, but we're gonna assume first that it just needs to be cleaned to create a better ground connection. So using some electrical cleaner to cut through some of the grease that's built up on this metal plate. And then we're cleaning the bottom of the burner where that makes contact with that metal plate. This is all part of just trying to get a better ground. The power is coming through the orange uh, wire that's coming into the igniter, but there's another side of the circuit and that's the ground connection. And that's produced by the metal parts. So the bottom of the igniter touching this metal plate. So if the metal plate's really clean and the bottom of the burner's clean, and then the next part, the burner head that touches the burner itself is clean, then you have really good metal to metal ground connections. So that's one of the first things to try if you have a weak spark or maybe even no spark. I've been using a wire brush. I get these at the dollar store. You get like, I think two or three for a dollar. And then some electrical cleaner. You can get this from Home Depot in the electrical section. I'm using that to clean the igniter itself. These are really good igniters on the, on the Capitol. They have a, a housing around them to protect them because they're made of porcelain. So I did speed up the camera here, but I'm not doing this with a lot of force. I'm, I'm going fast, but I'm going kind of light so I don't break the porcelain. And the metal part you can push in really hard. This is the burner head using the same principle, just using electrical cleaner, wiping it off, and then trying to get it as shiny as possible, removing all the grease and removing the rust and the corrosion that builds up. 
So the burners that get used a lot do end up with the most ground problem because they get the most grease on them. And also the hot, cold, hot, cold produces water, which can cause them to have rust or corrosion. And those are all the enemies of a good electrical circuit. So you get kind of a weak ground and you can get weak ignition. Turned out with this particular one that these steps didn't help. This often does work. You should try this first. But in our case, the spark module that creates the spark was just worn out. It was just used so often that it needed to be replaced. On some ovens, or some ranges, they have one spark module that brings spark to all the different burners. But on this one, each burner has its own little spark module. We'll put a link in the description below if you need to get a spark module for your capital range too. So I'm gonna try this now. I got the burner head, putting it on the nice clean burner. Everything's super clean, the igniter's clean. But when I try it, same thing, just a really faint sound, no spark at all. So makes me think that, well, it's not the ground problem. And it's starting to look like that spark module. One other thing you could do is to switch things around. Here's what the little individual spark module looks like. It has um, two wires coming in, a line and a neutral to bring power, and then the little orange wire going out to the igniter. One thing I'll try here in a second though is I'll switch the burners around just to make sure that uh, it is a problem with the spark module, not a problem with the igniter itself. So you can take some of the parts off of one of the other burners. I'm gonna pull this orange wire out of that burner. And I'll go ahead and take this burner, the suspicious one, I'll take its wire out and I'll shift it over to that back position because that back position was working. So I have to pull this wire out. Sometimes these wires have trouble coming out. You can use a pair of pliers though, would make it easier. You got some meat on those pliers. So now I'll take that burner that was giving me trouble and I'll hook it up to this back wire and then see if that does any good. So I'll put it into the back burner position. This is the this is the troublemaking burner with maybe a bad igniter. I'm just gonna see what happens. So when I try it, <clears throat> I can hear a spark now, which is good. And I got a good ignition. So that tells me the igniter's good, the burner's good, it has a good ground, the cleaning really helped, but this orange wire that was bringing power to the igniter is not bringing power because the module that makes the power is messed up. So I got to get to the module. I got to unplug it, get all these um, burner knobs off, just pull them straight off. And then I got to get this whole front panel off. I got to take out this trim piece that sits underneath the drip pan. There's a bunch of screws, you pull it off. And then I gotta get to this Torx 15 screw here. There's two of them underneath the um, little metal box that holds the uh, burner knobs. I'm using a Torx 15 bit. And there's two long machine screws here on the right and on the left, right and left corners, one for each corner. Once you get those out, you can pull that whole box out away from the oven at the bottom, and then it'll come out at about 45 degrees, and then the upper lip will come out, and then you can get that whole box out by about two inches away where you can get, get to the parts behind it. So now I'm gonna do that same screw here on the left side. So it's about an inch long machine screw. You zip it out. And 
So here I'm pulling it out 45 degrees. It releases from the top, just slips out. And that gives me access to that little spark module. We've got one for each one of the burners. And I'm gonna grab the orange wire that's for that burner that's giving me trouble. I'm gonna tug on it, and that's gonna help me see where that orange wire hooks up to which one of these gray spark modules. Spark modules are these gray plastic boxes, a little bit hard to see here on camera. And it's held in by two Phillips head screws. So I'm cutting the zip tie that's holding the wires so I can kind of free up the wires. And I'll pull the orange wire out of the gray plastic box, the spark module. And I'm putting it into the new spark module. This one's a blue color. I'm <clears throat> putting the um, orange wire, which is a small spade terminal into it and then in the back of it I have a gray wire coming in which is a larger terminal coming into the L terminal which is the line terminal the incoming power and then I have a white wire going to the other big terminal and that's the neutral and then hooked to that same neutral is another white wire that's the one I'm hooking up right now so the neutral wire goes into it, but then there's another neutral white wire that hooks up to it. And that creates this slight like, daisy chain circuit that goes to the next neutral line, next neutral line, next neutral line to all the different spark module boxes. So I've got the wires all hooked up. I got a gray wire. I got the white neutral wire. I got the orange little wire that brings power. I'll get that in there and add its Phillips head screw to hold it. And then we're pretty much done. We just have to put all the pieces back. We'll put a link in the description below for the oven igniter and for the spark module. And I got the box back into position. I'm adding those two machine head screws back in. The way I get the box back in as I came in at the top at 45 degrees to get it underneath the lip, and then I pushed the bottom in. I'm adding those screws back in. So here's that big machine screw on the right side. Let's line it up. So I'm lift it a little bit and then zip it in. Perfect. All right, got all the knobs back in. We got a good ignition, good flame. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you with your capital range. Thanks so much for watching our video today. I hope that this video has saved you some time and money. And if so, could you please press down in the video description below the donation link and send us a donation so we can keep this service going. Thanks again. And if you have any questions about this repair, could you contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.